Hello everyone, it's Adam here. Uh, this are a few clips together of my journey to the BMW NEF rally, Northeast Florida rally. And uh, this year was in Live Oak, Florida, their winter rally. It was their 40th anniversary, which is pretty exciting. So um, I left the office Thursday and there were tornado warnings the entire way south, 40 mile an hour wind gusts, and just tons of rain. But it did grant me this gorgeous sunset um, just before Atlanta. And I mean, look at this, it's just beautiful. Somewhere in South Carolina is this gorgeous sunset and I just loved it. But I was rained on for, I wanna say three or four hours straight. And it was just, <laughs> it was it was very um, unfortunate. But uh, I went to my dad's house in Alabama and spent the night with him. This is me going through Atlanta at around 6.30 p.m. Uh, got to my dad's around 8 or 8.30 in uh, just around Dothan, Alabama areas where he lives and uh, had a great night with him. Uh, this next clip here is just me driving uh, on some of the clay and stuff around his place. Uh, Garmin did a good job, by the way. Garmin actually took me around a lot of traffic, which was really nice. So uh, that was that was good. But um, nothing I can do about the tornado warnings, unfortunately. Um, some thoughts on the rally. It was really, really good. So I think it was roughly 200, 250 people there. My first time at a Florida, Northeast Florida BMW event. Um, the person that rode the furthest was actually from New Hampshire. Uh, the guy rode 18 hours straight on uh, Sunday home and supposedly had some snow uh, on his way back to New Hampshire. Not surprised. Um, you know, I, I had a rough ride home Saturday night. Um, Sunday morning was going to be 27 degrees in the morning. So I ended up leaving on Saturday night. Um, still had a good time. I still did some good riding, enjoyed the trip. But uh, this is also Alabama. But I just didn't want to wake up on Sunday morning and ride home uh, in below freezing weather for a few hours. So, um, yeah. Oh, I wanted. This is a, a, um, a Luf, a Luthra? Not Luthra. Eufaula. Sorry. Eufaula, Alabama. Uh, this is where they filmed Sweet Home Alabama, or at least a couple of scenes. I drove through this intentionally because I had heard that there's just some gorgeous, gorgeous period homes here. And there were. I spent like half an hour. Uh, here just after breakfast, uh, riding around, checking out some of the old uh, main streets. And that's one thing about the South that the North doesn't really have. It has these really quaint, um, you know, Civil War era main streets that are just really, really cool looking. And then uh, I took back roads from Eufaula all the way down to Live Oak, Florida. I skipped I-75 um, through Valdosta and just took back roads. I had all day to get there. So I went from like, you know, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. to go 250 miles. But uh, it was just great riding through, you know, farmland and checking things out. Good weather, too. Uh, just couldn't have wished for better weather after the previous evening's um, rain. I went through a couple of places that I grew up. So I was born in Gainesville, Florida. I ended up going through um, uh, Live Oak, Florida, Branford, Florida, Perry, as well as Lake City, uh, those are kind of my childhood stomping grounds. Uh, I grew up in a trailer, a single wide trailer in Brantford, Florida, um, until we moved to St. Augustine when I was in third grade, and then back to Florida, and, and then Alabama for a bit as well. So I've lived in all these areas, and it was, you know, it's it's kind of nice going back to these places and just checking it out. Um, but man, am I am I thankful that I have, you know, was able to, um, with just a high school diploma able to leave Florida and go to work, um, you know, as a professional in technology in California New Hampshire and now Charlotte, because man, I, I'm not sure what my life would have been, been if I had stayed in these, um, small towns the rest of my life. I could have for sure, but man, I would be a totally different person. And, um, so this is actually, um, going through, uh, Perry, Florida, um, and that's where a lot of my family uh, has property and has uh, been buried. So uh, you know, Perry's a small town. It's grown quite a, quite a bit, uh, but still a small town. So after getting through Perry, I uh, went through Live Oak. My mom used to work at the post office in Live Oak. And my grandmother, who's retired now, worked um, at the Economic Development Center in Live Oak um, as their executive director. So, you know, brings back a lot of memories driving through Live Oak, which has gotten a lot bigger, actually, in the past uh, couple of decades. 
Uh, I stopped my normal bottle of bourbon, which I always do on these trips, and met up with two riders from Florida who were going to the rally. So they, they, they led the way and took me to the Weed Conference Center. Um, it was nice. So you, you know, dinner and breakfast, um, you could pay you know, per meal. Um, camping, if you wanted a bunkhouse or a cabin, it's cost more. I camped out. Um, again, 200 pe people or so. There were the BMW Performance Center was there with the Riders Academy doing um, uh, doing trainings, which was really really cool. And um, uh, I think it was pretty affordable too. Honestly, I should have done it, but I did get some photos the next day of, of people doing their training, which is always always great and good to see the PC team. And you know, they were out in full force doing stuff there. Um, there were great, good good prizes, entertainment, big bonfire. So, you know, I really feel like this this rally is in its 40th year. It has a good ma maturity, kind of like Green Mountain Rally we have in Vermont, um, but packed. And not everyone rode BMWs, which is okay. I'm going to stop talking here and kind of showcase uh, some of the bonfire activities that we had later in the evening. Thank you. So this is the next morning. Uh, woke up, I looked at the weather for the next 24 hours and I realized it's gonna be way too cold to sleep here again tonight. And so I packed everything up and went out on one of the rides. Um, there's not, you know, Florida, it's weird. It's like just straight. <laughs> I grew up there, I know the roads, but like, it's just straight. Um, yes, there are some dirt roads, but like they're mostly sand. Um, and you're likely to end up on someone's private property because a lot of farms just sort of traverse these roads. Some of them go nowhere or they're just like a grid and they go to a right-hand turn which goes back to the main road. There's just not much to explore in this area of Northeast Florida. Very rural, but you're just gonna be on like one state road for like 55 miles. You'll get to a town, <clears throat> there'll be nothing, and then <laughs> you're, you're gonna, you know, explore a dirt road and then get back on the main road again. So um, one guy told me that, you know, for Florida riders, you gotta ride 500 miles to get to good roads. So that's, um, yeah, that's definitely evident with uh, with what I saw uh, <laughs> in, this, in this short 24 hours on my GS. So uh, after this, I went um, to um, uh, Brantford, Florida, see my grandparents. Um, I also went to um, Lake City, Florida to see my grandmother. This is Brantford here. Uh, I also went to the Swanee Riding Club. They were doing barrel races. I went. I grew up going to the Swanee Riding Club both as a horseback rider. Uh, we just had workhorses, um, but also as a, a you know a, a, um, a spectator. And uh, Brantford doesn't change much either, by the way. But I went to Swanee Riding Club for a bit, uh, about two hours, and watched some races. It was great. There were 80 uh, women riders, all ages, doing barrel riding. Uh, fastest time wins. And there were some classes, I think, for age. But for the most part, just, just pretty cool to go back there. I got some great pictures I put up on Flickr that I'll link to in the description, like always. Um, but, you know, Brantford doesn't change much. Swanee River was, um, you know, as murky and gross as it always looks. And <laughs> and then I ended up riding out to Brantford to see my grandparents um, on their dairy farm. They've got about two to three thousand dairy cow. My grandfather is retired now, so someone else runs it. But um, you know he's been in the dairy business since the 50s, and um, so it was good to catch up with them and just chat. Um, I brought my own food because my grandmother cooks pretty pretty high fat, high salt food. So I brought my own sub sandwich and just caught up with them for a while. Um, the ride home after this, so I ended up staying in, in North Florida till about 5 p.m. And then I rode straight home, which is about six hours. I started off heading towards uh, Valdosta on back roads, then I cut over to 95. 
because I realized it was going to be too late to get home, like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. arrival time. So I got home at 12.30 a.m., um, having done about 1,200 miles in 40 hours. Um, and then it includes sleeping, obviously, and socializing. So that's not that's a pretty good riding weekend, I would say. But um, the ride home was cold. The average temperature on the ride home was like, started around around you know, 48 and then hit 40 and then 35 for about an hour and a half. And then um, I ended up getting home. The last 100 miles was about 30 degrees. And um, man, it was so cold. 30 degrees was treacherous. So I stopped in Columbia, South Carolina, a quick trip for a hot dog and a coffee at like 11 p.m. And then, um, yeah, freezing. But great weekend. Thanks for watching, everyone. It is 37 degrees. Ooh. There's no place to sit here either, except for here, outside, where I've just been for the last six hours. Whew. That was tough.